My name is Emily Schaffretz, and I am a senior musical theater major here at UNH. I also have a dance and music minor, which is how I connect back to this project. I started dance when I was four years old, and I started with jazz because that style of movement was really energetic and spoke to me a little more than the discipline of maybe ballet, at least originally. So for me, socially, um, I've always identified as a dancer from a very young age. I may be a musical theater major, but I would say that my, um, out of kind of the three disciplines within that of, of singing or music, acting, and then dancing, they call it the triple threat, that for me, dance is the one that I connect with the most. Um, dance is one of the most genuine expressions of self that includes all of yourself. It is such a kinesthetic experience that it can be really cathartic and liberating. You're really gonna you're gonna touch people. That audience is gonna connect with that art form, and they're gonna they're gonna see it in a way that they probably wouldn't have if they were just told about it or saw a clip of an incident. And we are creating that bond with an audience that um, even if it's not live, in this case, it's through video, is still something that, that isn't really replicated in pretty much any other form. It's really special. I think that um, dance is one of the most universal forms, as in um, it's, not, it's not something that needs to be spoken. When we're teaching, we'll use words to explain the movement, but it's, it's watching, it's doing and then watching and then trying it yourself. It doesn't matter really your experience level or what background you come from. I firmly believe that everybody can move their body. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a level of like high intensity, but you know, I think dance is for everyone. And that is something that can bridge um, a gap. I think arts is one of the best ways to bridge that gap, whether like no matter what background you come from or like how old you are, the arts really do bring people together and through movement and through empathy, no matter what your political background is, that is something that you, you can come together and, and learn from each other and experience. You're watching a movement and, and the human experience is so universal that if we are really being authentic to ourselves and our performance and that movement reflects that, you the viewer will see that and will have that connection. There's, there's no language barrier when it comes to dance. Um, movement is so universal and, and music to an extent also carries a lot of those qualities. children will know who stood for truth. The time has come for America to hear the truth. It looms 
hands over our democracy. Like a god clown. children will know who stood for truth. So this piece is called Come Back Home, and it features a bunch of audio clips from a bunch of speakers commenting on the insurrection on January 6th, as well as a call to action about the importance of not being um, bipartisan in world events and being an active participant in social justice and change for the better. Um, in this piece, definitely look out for the moment of total ignorance and sitting in bias where one person gets up and covers their ears. There's a Martin Luther King quote that goes along with it, which says, there comes a time when silence is betrayal. And you will see that moment of that individual walking away from people who are reaching out their hands for that help and the total disengagement. Also, keep an eye out for at the end when there's a call to action and the whole group comes back together and they stand for justice and they have shown up and are ready to be a part of the conversation.
ever seen Old glory raised to browbeat, bash and maim With no sense of irony or shame We thought we thought about words and kind of whatever came to mind when we were talking about it. And then we looked into it deeper and we found that there was connections to old Confederate battle hymns. And so we took our words and we cleverly sort of adapted those to fit what we were seeing right now with the insurrection in the Capitol. And then our movement reflects those feelings, you have um, shattering glass of window panes, you have, you have the banging on the window pane at that one point, we have the little covering of the eyes like my, mine eyes have never seen. We have the to battle to arms when we're pulling back a bow and with knives when we, we hit up the side of our feet. The movement not only is a reaction to the feeling of the moment, but also the musical phrasing and how that feels additionally with um, the lyrics. Just, just a moment ago I read an article by a Jewish woman who says, for us anti-Semitism is not a matter of having friends. Yeah. For us anti-Semitism is a constant subground river. We hear it uh, rumbling, humble, go, rolling along all the time. Yeah. And uh, Germany isn't the only place where that happens. Yeah.
for me, a constant subground river was exactly the piece that and the story that I needed to tell in this moment. I actually like how with the three, that's the one that doesn't have any other text with it. It really allowed me when I was first um, engaging with the piece to just let what I was hearing and how I was feeling influence the movement, which ultimately is what became the final piece. It, it was tweaked and altered to, to change it a little more in, in, into the vision of what I saw at the very end. But um, I think the piece speaks for itself um, in that sense. Racism and sexism and um, the other crimes against other like religious groups and, and Muslims and Asians are happening and are still very like important problems. But we've just thought that it, because, you know, Holocaust happened, World War II happened, and that it's over now, that anti-Semitism just doesn't exist, that it is not something that's still present, but it is. A Constant Subground River is a piece that talks about the ever-presence of anti-Semitism and that struggle that is still there under the surface, even if it isn't always in your face and super loud, but that feeling of sometimes being alone and reaching out for help and not having the call answered. And it comes in waves. And we see that with the imagery of water but also how we start from a moment of stillness and then something stirs and then we feel it. We have those moments where it's more intense and then maybe it subsides for a little bit and we come back to a moment of rest. <laughs>